it's now my uh, uh, pleasure to call up uh, Norjam Besal, uh, who's going to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be with you today. I'm a Kurdish writer, journalist, and human rights defender. Today, I want to tell you the story of my city, Diyarbakir, and the story of me. There will be slides, I think, in a few minutes there. And one is the photos of my city before the military curfew of 2015 and 2016. And the second is photos of my hometown after the military operations ended. My city, my Diyarbakir, is 7,000 years old UNESCO protected city. And it is at the heart of Mesopotamia. It is the biggest Kurdish city and was under state bombardment between December 2015 and March 2016. Let me tell you how everything began. The peace process between the Turkish state and the Kurdistan Workers' Party collapsed in July of 2015. In August of 2015, clashes began in Kurdish cities. The state declared military curfews in Kurdish cities across southeastern Turkey. At first, lasting for a couple of days, then they became regular and month long. Days went on under bombs and gunfire. People in the curfew areas were trapped in their houses as they continued their lives with limited food and water that they had stockpiled before the curfew. People died inside their homes as shrapnel hit their houses. The state did not even allow families to bury their dead. In some cities like Gizre, mothers put the dead bodies of their children in refrigerators to prevent their decomposition. In my city, Diyarbakir, dead bodies remained in the streets for months. We witnessed terrible human rights violations and war crimes. These are the streets where I grew up, where I played, and where I made memories. My, st my state destroyed that area. My mo memories have no home. There is no place for ongoing war and for the human rights violations in Turkish media today. Furthermore, there is no political access for Kurdish people. I take an active role in informing the public about what's really happening in my region of Kurdistan. For this, I have been threatened, harassed, and intimidated on social media and some of my articles were unlawfully banned by the security forces. There have been charges against me because of my articles. Last year, days after the Turkish offensive to Afrin began, I was at home. It was just after midnight. I was at home with my children. It was the normal Sunday night. Then I heard a terrible noise. At first, I thought that it was an earthquake. Then I figured out that the, the sounds are coming from my front door. And I thought that perhaps our home was under attack, being bombed or shot at. So I shouted to my children and tried to hide the children. We soon understood that the men on the other side of the door were police and they were trying to break down my door. And they broke down my door, and 20 masked and heavily armed special operation officers stormed my home. With all guns pointed at me, they asked if I was Nurjan myself. And then the head of the squad said that they had a warrant to search my home, and I asked, if they had a warrant to break down my door. This is how I was detained last year. They violently entered my home, a home that they knew that, they, that there is two kids, two children inside. 
One day later, I learned that I was detained because of five tweets I had made against the war in Afrin. As you remember, the Turkish government gave the name Olive Branch to the war in Afrin. Let me read you my tweets, these five tweets. The first one was to give the name Olive Branch to war, to that. This is Turkey. The second tweet, what are coming from tanks are not olive branches, they are bombs. When they drop, people are dying. Ahmet is dying, Hassan is dying, Rodi is dying, Mizgin is dying. Lives are ending. My third tweet, the leftists, the rightists, the nationalists and the Islamists are all united together in hate against the Kurdish people. My fourth tweet, where do you think that you are going to conquer? Which religion? Which belief supports war and death? I'm, and my last tweet, I retweeted another journalist's photo of a dead child in Afrin, and I wrote, those who want war, look at this picture, a child died today. And because of these five peace tweets, I was accused of terrorist propaganda and calling for provocative action. As you see, these tweets, these tweets do not contain any terrorist propaganda or provocative action. But these tweets demonstrate that I am against war and that. And yes, I criticize the policies of Turkish government. The prosecutor demanded a three-year jail sentence because of these five tweets. Just last month, my case was closed and I was acquitted after a year. I also received a 10-month prison sentence due to an article I wrote recording the war crimes in Kurdish town of Cizre, where nearly 150 people were burnt alive in the basements as they took shelter during the bombardment. After one year in court, the court ruled to suspend the verdict, meaning that there will be no penalty as soon as as long as I don't humiliate the Turkish security forces again in the next five years. I am just one story out of many. And I am lucky. I am here and can talk to you. And, but many are not so lucky in Turkey. Today, in my country, human rights are under the feet of the state. Today, when you visit my region, you will see police barricades everywhere. You will see tanks, armored vehicles. You will see soldiers and police with heavy weapons in the streets. You will see how the state continues to control our lives. There is so much violence in Turkey, but there is also so much indifference. I am angry because of all these atrocities are happening in my country. I am angry that these atrocities are happening in front of the world. I am angry that my city, 7,000 year old UNESCO protected city was destroyed in front of the UN. As someone who has witnessed countless human rights violations, I had always believed that human dignity will win in the end. But after what I have witnessed in the last four years, I have now my doubts. Human rights have never been so vilified. Human life has never been so cheapened. And human dignity has never been so trampled upon. What we love, what we believe is in danger in, Tur in Turkey. Thank you. Gelex Pass.